Hi, I'm Mike Russos from the .NET Customer Success Team, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about authentication and authorization in ASP.NET Core Apps. So probably the place to start is with the difference between authentication and authorization, because they're, they're different. Authentication refers to finding out who a user is, ascertaining their identity, finding out if they are who they say they are. Authorization, then, is about determining uh, whether a given user, once you know who they are, is allowed to access a given API or resource based on claims they have or uh, roles they're in, etc. Okay. So when we think about authentication in ASP.NET Core, um, there's a few things to look at. Often you're going to be using the ASP.NET Core identity uh, package, and that is in fact, I'll go back to this previous slide and just show you the, the docs on that because it's worth reading up on. You can go out to docs.microsoft.com, ASP.NET, and we have an introduction to identity here under the authentication section. Now, you, you're often going to use that because that's sort of the built-in uh, authentication solution for ASP.NET Core. It allows users, uh, it allows you to set up a, a database locally uh, through Entity Framework. Um, by default, that will store usernames, uh, salted hashed passwords, um, information about the users, so that users can register with your site, log in, etc. Um, a lot of times, though, you're going to want to use um, third parties as well for your authentication. So that could be that you're going to use social authentication providers like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, now, when you use those, you can use those either by themselves just to get the identity, store that in a cookie or something. Or you can use that in conjunction with ASP.NET Core Identity so that a user would log in um, through Facebook's page using their Facebook credentials, for example. Then their Facebook identity would be provided to your app, and you could then uh, store that in an ASP.NET Core Identity database along with other information about the user which is specific to your application. That's a common model. A lot of a lot of times people will also use Azure Active Directory to have all of their authentication provided as a service, essentially. Users log in uh, with Azure Active Directory and the, and the user information is then just provided to your app um, by AAD. Uh, you can, of course, just sort of do this yourself, like I said, with ASP.NET Core Identity. It has the drawback that it's really set up out of the box to service sort of an MVC website where a user logs in, and after they've logged in, their user information is stored in a cookie, so that then in subsequent requests to your site, you um, their cookie middleware will deserialize the user's identity for you. But that doesn't work real well if you're creating a web API where you need to handle calls from other websites that maybe don't have your cookies from a native um, application from a mobile app. These are all cases where a cookie isn't a good means of transmitting user information. So instead you might want your authentication server to be able to issue tokens. Uh, once you start talking about a security token service, ASP.NET Core Identity isn't going to solve that by itself. Uh, there are some good third-party options though, so if that's the situation you're in, you can look at Identity Server 4 or Open IDICT as two good full-featured um, libraries which allow you to issue security tokens like um, JWT bearer tokens from your your web app. Uh, and they both integrate with ASP.NET Core Identity so you can store the user's information in an ASP.NET Core Identity database, but these libraries would take care of the token handling. So to get started with ASP.NET Core Identity, it's real easy. When you're creating a new ASP.NET ASP Core app, you just have to use this change authentication button on the new project template. And there's actually command line options if you're using the .NET CLI as well. And you specify that you want individual user accounts. And that's going to set up the template that gets scaffolded to include ASP.NET Core Identity out of the box. And there's a lot of useful types that you get with that. It's all set up. So you don't really have to do much if you're just um, creating a basic scenario. But if you want to customize usage, you'll find useful types like the user manager, sign-in manager, and role manager to um, sort of manage what uh, is happening as far as authentication goes in your app. So I can show a, a quick demo of this. 
I have a, a couple of projects here. The first one is an Identity Server 4 authentication server. So it's just a small sample of how you can use Identity Server 4. But remember, Identity Server 4 can use ASP.NET Core Identity under the hood for storing user information. So this is actually a website that uses ASP.NET Core Identity along with Identity Server. So users can come here, register, and um, that part is all just ASP.NET Core Identity when they're doing it just directly through the site. So you see here, in my configure services method, I call services.addIdentity and I specify the user type which is going to derive from identity user. You could use identity user directly if it was um, sufficient for your, for your scenario, but you also can derive from it if you want to have custom information. Like I have a contrived example here where I'm storing a user's office number so that we can use it for authorization decisions later. When you call add identity, you have to indicate when you configure uh, ASP.NET Core Identity where you're going to be storing the user information. So uh, typically that's going to be Entity Framework. So I add Entity Framework stores and this is an application DB context which derives from Identity DB context. Um, and then we have default token providers if we need to do things like reset passwords or whatever. Um, now if you don't want to use Entity Framework you can roll your own uh, store here as well. It's extensible but in most cases Entity Framework is going to do what you need. Uh, so there's that. Um, we include that um, uh, in our configure services method. And then in configure, where we're setting up our pipeline, we say app.useIdentity. And it's important that this happens before use MVC. It's important that it happens before use identity server if you're using identity server, because this is where we're going to implicitly um, look at the cookies. If you weren't using uh, ASP.NET Core Identity, but you still wanted to get user information out of a cookie, you could just use cookie authentication directly uh, with this middleware. But uh, you get that included with ASP.NET Core Identity, so this is all you need. And this is all part of the template. I'm showing you so you know what it is, but you don't have to write most of this code yourself. If you're just creating a new project with individual user accounts, this is all set up for you. Also set up for you will be the account controller, where you can uh, have users log in. It's using the sign-in manager API for that. You can create new users using the user manager uh, type. And again, this is all scaffolded for you. You may need to come in and make some changes if your user types are um, not standards. So like here, I'm actually adding additional claims to the user for their office number. Um, but, you know, there, that's a little more advanced for basic scenarios. This is all you need to do. Um, so that's ASP.NET Core Identity in a, in a very small nutshell. So uh, I also talked about the social authentication. This is pretty popular. It's, it's really as easy as using uh, middleware, which knows how to connect to these social providers through OAuth or OpenID Connect. Um, you're going to find things like Facebook and Twitter, um, packages. We also have, if you go out to ASP.NET Security OAuth providers, this is a, a third party uh, resource which has just a whole ton of middleware for about any auth authentication service you can imagine. It could be Slack, Salesforce, Reddit, PayPal. <laughs> These all plug in very easily and you can again use them with uh, ASP.NET Core Identity if you like. Um, and then we also have this uh, general OpenID Connect middleware, which will allow you to use any authentication service which supports the OpenID Connect protocol. So for example, this is how you would use Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory <laughs> supports OpenID Connect, so you, you just put this middleware in your pipeline saying use OpenID Connect authentication, you provide information about how, how to connect to your Azure AD instance, and then uh, when it comes time to authenticate, will look to Azure Active Directory to do that. You also could plug in a Windows Server 2016 on-premise Active Directory server here because that also supports OpenID Connect. Um, and again, make sure you have that before the use MVC call in your um, startup uh, pipeline because it's important that users are authenticated before you try to serve an MVC endpoint. So that's a little bit about um, those those more common scenarios. If you do want to 
issue your own security tokens for use from like a mobile app or a native app. You can issue JOT tokens using Identity Server 4 or OpenIDict. Um, they both have good documentation online. You go out to Identity Server 4, read the docs, or you could go out to OpenIDict's um, GitHub page and learn about them there. And then actually, if you go look on the Microsoft ASP.NET um, blog, my, blogs msdn microsoft.com slash webdev, I've written a short um, tutorial on getting started with each of these technologies. And so uh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so, oh, and I suppose I also just talk about if you're doing this, then you'll want your API which expects someone to have authenticated with these methods to be able to consume the token that's going to be coming in the header because the workflow is that someone would authenticate with your authentication server and then when they try to use an API which is protected by you know authorization that expects to be authenticated by one of those servers they're going to pass along the token they got back and so you use the JWT bearer middleware for that and it's really as easy as saying use JWT bearer authentication you give the audience um, which is the resource typically that's um, being protected, and the authority, which is who issued the token, and it will validate that the token is is good. And there are more advanced options. You can um, actually check out more of the blog posts out on the ASP.NET Core um, blog to see some more advanced usages of this middleware. So now let's talk briefly about authorization. Authorization is, again, just determining whether a user has access to a given resource or API or not. And if you just want to make sure that someone's not accessing an API without logging in, it's as easy as putting the authorize attribute on a controller or on a, a method. Okay, So if I come back over to my example, this was my authentication server. Down here I have a different a web API where I'm trying to protect some of my members. And so in here you can see I've put an authorize attribute. If I were to put authorize with no other attributes like this, that's going to say only someone who's logged in can access this API. You then can add um, more granularity to who's allowed to access an API by passing these um, additional parameters into the authorized attribute. You can specify roles, which means that the user has to be in a particular role, which is a concept supported by ASP.NET Core Identity, or if you're getting the user information out of um, you know, a JOT token or something, it'll just be the role claim. So we can say, okay, this is only accessible to people who are administrators and who meet this other authorization policy, which I'll talk about in a minute. This one's available to managers, um, etc. And so um, that sort of role-based authorization is a pretty easy way to, to segment your APIs and say, these APIs are available only to the administrators or only to users in a particular role. And then as long as you've um, used the role manager APIs in ASP.NET Core Identity, or somehow attached to the right claims to uh, tokens, users will be able to access or not access APIs based on their roles. If you need more custom authorization control, you, you can actually create custom authorization policies. And there's some very good documentation. If you go out to, uh, again, our docs site and look at custom policy-based authorization, it's all described there. There's also a cool online learning workshop which one of our security experts put together. If you go out to his GitHub page, blowdart slash ASP.NET authorization workshop, sort of walks you through ASP.NET Core authorization as well. But really what it comes down to is you implement an I-authorization requirement, which is just a, a typically a small type that it represents uh, some requirement somebody has to meet. And then you implement a handler with the logic to know whether or not a given user with a particular set of claims meets that requirement or not. And then you register those with your site. So if I come out here and go to my startup CS, you can see I call services and add authorization and I add a policy. I add a new requirement to that policy, and this is my custom uh, requirement type I was talking about. And then I also, with dependency injection, register an I authorization handler, which implements authorization handler for that particular requirement type. So this is then able to determine whether or not a given user satisfies that requirement by looking at their claims, in this case, and seeing if they have a claim from the correct issuer and with the correct value. And if so, then it says um, that requirement succeeds and we can allow access. And so it's pretty straightforward. 
and gives you a lot of control over who's allowed to access particular resources or not access them in your ASP.NET Core APIs. And so I'd encourage you to go check out the docs and this workshop to get more details on, on that process. Now, users also often want to know about on-premise AD and Windows authentication. So Windows authentication uh, today is provided by IIS, and that continues to work. So if you have an ASP.NET Core app that's run in IIS, Windows user information will be provided to you, including groups as roles, so you can do easy role-based authorization. What we don't support yet is ADFS or WSFED authentication. So it's not possible to take an ASP.NET Core app run it on Linux, for example, and have someone authenticate against an on-premise uh, AD instance unless it happens to be a server 2016 AD instance because then you can use OpenID Connect as we talked about previously. So this is something that um, is on the roadmap. We don't have a timeline yet, so it could be uh, a ways out there, but it's a known issue. And if, if you want, you can go out to the ASP.NET security repository on GitHub and follow issue number 43 where we're tracking this, this gap. But in the meantime, you could have authentication done um, by you know a reverse proxy or a load balancer or something uh, in front of your ASP.NET Core app and then provide the um, user information that way. If you want to authorize, a lot of times in the past with .NET Framework apps, users would have used the system directory services libraries to query user membership data and make authorization decisions based on that. Again, this is something that we don't have yet, but should be coming soon. So the system directory services namespaces are not yet available in .NET Core or .NET Standard, but they're being worked on now. We actually have preview bits available uh, on Windows, and they should be fully available on Windows later this summer. And then at that point, cross-platform work will, will get underway, and we should have cross-platform work coming um, later on. Uh, and we don't have a timeline for that yet, but it's, it's in progress. Now, when we do start getting the system directory services APIs working cross-platform, <laughs> know that the system directory services protocols will very likely be the first library to come online because it's just an LDAP library, which is easy to make work cross-platform. So if you have code that's using system directory services today, it may be worth seeing if you can get it to use system directory services protocols instead, which is just a lower level library that can do pretty much all the same things, because that's going to get you working cross-platform sooner if that's a priority for your scenario. So um, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, and you know, just as a quick overview, and again, if you go out to the ASP.NET Core documentation, you can get a lot more detail. Uh, but, you know, just on how to set things up to authenticate and authorize in an ASP.NET Core app.